Welcome to The Great Loop Aboard the Perch. I'm Kim Russo with America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. And if you watched the last leg, you know that we are now on the Inland Rivers. This is Lake 64, and we're going from Joliet to Ottawa, Illinois. We had tied up the night before at the Free Wall in Joliet. It's one of the few free walls that also includes free power. And we were there with, I'd say, you know, roughly 10 other looper boats. The best way to arrange a departure in this scenario, there was a lock. One of the first things we'd hit after we departed Joliet. So one boat was designated as the person to communicate with the lock bright and early in the morning. And based on the time the lock thought they'd be able to get us through, we would depart the marina. And just as a reminder, the commercial traffic does have priority, so there can sometimes be very long waits at locks. Based on the time that the lock wanted us to arrive, we had an issue with a bridge that was between the wall and the lock. The bridge opens on demand, but on during rush hour, it does not open at all. So based on those parameters, we had you know a couple of hoops to jump through. Um, we could leave before the bridge was closed for a rush hour, and then we'd be forced to wait at the lock, or we could wait and leave after rush hour and hopefully get into the more lock more quickly. So better scenario to stay tied to the wall and leave after rush hour was over, and that's what we chose to do. So we waited a little bit for the bridge to open and uh, then waited a pretty short time for us all to enter the lock. These locks, the Corps of Engineers locks on the Illinois Waterway and, and all that you'll see down through the river system are immense locks to com compared to what we were seeing in the Trent Severn Waterway and the Erie Canal. So there are not as many bollards to attach to. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you attach to them. But one of the things that is unique is that the lockmasters wanted us to raft up. Even though we're very far apart from each other, that was the procedure. So this is a bollard. It's a floating bollard. You can hear the noise. I left the video uh, sound on. That's the bollard singing to us. Um, but you can see that from the perch, we wrapped the line once around the bollard and then brought it back. You want to do that at about midships. The bollards are placed too far apart to be able to have two for a recreational boat of most sizes for loopers. So you want to grab that at midships. You want to wrap the cleat around it. I'm sorry, wrap the line around the um, floating bollard. And then as you can see in that video, the bollard is going to move with you. You still need to tend the line. It can get caught. Um, and there's some circumstances where, you know, if you float to the top and the bollard reaches the top, the boat may still be floating up a little bit and you'll need to loosen up on that line. Um, a little bit more on those floating bollards to come. We hit our second lock of the day, which was the Marseilles lock. And it's spelled like Marseille in France, but pronounced Marseilles here locally. And we were going to have a pretty long wait at Marseilles. So we arrived around noon. This is a bunch of looper boats who we dropped anchor because we knew we had a several hour wait. In the end, I think it was three or four hours. I've cut out some of the video of us just uh, at anchor or just circling here. Um, but we were eventually cleared to enter the lock. So that's the boats getting ready to enter the Marseilles lock. And as we came in again, it was a raft up situation, um, but that all worked out just fine. We knew that um, waiting on that lock had put us a little bit behind where many of the boats were hoping to or planning to be for the day, and that is Ottawa, Illinois at Heritage Harbor. There's a look at a fairly large barge being pushed by a tow. This one was a red flagged barge, which means it's carrying hazardous, hazardous material, uh, and you will absolutely not be allowed inside a lock with that particular shipment of material. Sometimes if there's room with a commercial boat inside the lock, they'll put recreational and commercial vessels together. They definitely won't do that if it's a red flagged vessel. So you can see in that last picture, the sun is uh, starting to set. And at this point, we have one more lock to clear. The barge that held us up so long at the Marseilles lock, we were able to pass during this stretch of the waterway. Sometimes that works to your advantage and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes if you try to pass that commercial vessel, the next lock will hold you up because they know that you've done that. We handled that by calling ahead to the next lock, explaining the situation, and asking if we got there you know, well in advance of the barge, could we go ahead and lock through, and they agreed. Um, so we were hoping at this point to reach Heritage Harbor before sunset. Uh, that is a lock master there with one of the boat, looper boats behind us. You saw that uh, they are there to kind of help you get the line around the bollard if you need it. So that's good news. 
Sun was setting as we were coming out of the lock, but the best news is that Heritage Harbor is just a small distance away from here. Heritage Harbor is an AGLCA sponsor. They are phenomenal. Um, they had a crew waiting for these boats. They knew as soon as the lock opened, we would be on our way. They had pre-instructed us on how to handle that, how to reach them. And as the five or so boats that were still in our little flotilla approached the marina, they had us talk to them in order. They told us exactly how to get to the slip as the daylight was fading fast. And at each slip, they had a crew waiting to catch those lines and uh, the most professional dock crew I had ever seen. Uh, the marina is truly top notch. Jeremy, who is the dock master there, gives a briefing each day on navigation information, places to tie up, and most importantly, anchorages on the rest of the Illinois Waterway segment of the loop and on the Mississippi River part of the loop. So definitely plan to attend that. And to wrap up this leg, here is our Nebo log for the day. We were underway for about five hours and 40 minutes, but that uh, does not include the long wait that we had. So a total of 40 miles, we averaged about seven knots and had a maximum speed of about 10 knots. All in all, it was actually pretty close to, I believe, a 10 or 11 hour travel day. Um, so pretty lengthy, but we were thrilled to be tied up there at Heritage Harbor. There's a look at the full path for the day. Our next leg will take us on down the river from Ottawa to Peoria. We'll see you then.